Welcome devs to Codebase Resurrection, Revive and Refactor with AI. Today we will cover investigating a new code base. AI allows us to understand and onboard faster using the power of CodyMate. We will partner with our coding mate to dive deeper into the code base, gaining a greater understanding of why the code is the way it is. Then we will look briefly at the functional tests that are already present. This is important. Martin Fowler states, you need to test on the code you're changing. I go further in saying you need functional tests on the code to ensure the component you're changing does not alter its contract. If it does change, you need to be confident and understand and plan accordingly. Our task today is not to change any of the functionality. Next, we get to refactor using our coding mate to come up with a plan to incrementally execute our changes while we are always being the responsible driver during the refactor. Finally, we will end with a set of unit tests on our new modular maintainable code and briefly touch on how we uncover an invalid contract in our REST API, but decide not to change it based on our original goal. We will leave it for another day. Let's dive in. So I've checked out the project I need to start uh, contributing to, which is a Java Spring refactor project. So I know that it's probably a Java Spring app by the name and that it's using Gradle for build. Let's go ahead and open up the IntelliJ project and I'm going to open up my Codium 8 and I want to get some better insight into this. So I'm going to add to my mate the whole complete full project. And from there, I'm going to ask it to explain this project to me. So we see the files that it referenced. And now we're going to go ahead and read a little bit about this. I'm not going to read this word for word, but we can tell that, you know, and you can read it on your own time that it's an application, uh, Spring Boot application, and it's got a REST controllers in there and repositories and an entity class, configuration class, application initialization, um, some different uh, key annotations in their roles with it and the logging. And really, if I look at this, it's got data source, JDBC, and profile. And I'm not quite sure why all of that is in there with all those data sources. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this chat and just talk to my mate and say, you know, why are there more than than one uh, data frameworks being used? And it's given us a good printout here, and I'm just going to go up to the top really quick. And it says, you know, it's got the JPA, it's got JDBC. They have different purposes and scenarios, and it gave me a whole bunch of reasonings for it um, and what the JDBC template's for. And, you know, why use both? The flexibility and then uh, best of both worlds. So we can see just talking to our mate, not including anyone else, just my mate and I have now gotten a little bit better understanding of why multiple uh, data sources are being used in this project. Got an understanding of the complete project also too about the application. There's this user profile and a config. Just think if it was a larger um, application, you'd get a lot more here to read about before even diving into our code. Our goal during this refactor is not to change any of our functional contract. So let's go ahead and dive in and run our integration test that is a Spock specification class. And we should get all green here. We've gone over this in another video, but I'm just showing that I am starting up this Spock test ourselves in its own um, thread for the Spring Boot application. So it's actually running the Spring Boot application and testing out the interface changes. That's our functional contract. So we'll be running this a lot to make sure that that contract here, that is that REST API, that nothing changes, but we're gonna change all the code behind the scenes. Okay, now comes the fun part. 
we're going to go ahead and refactor the application class. I'm going to go ahead and focus on the current file, and I'm going to ask Codium 8 to improve this class. I'm going to break out the code into classes into their proper packages and provide in order to allow incremental class creation without failure in running the application for each class refactor. So it's gone ahead and broken out all of the classes and it's done it in a certain order for me. So let's go ahead and try the user profile. Let's break out the user profile. There's a couple different ways you can do this. One way that I'm going to show is I'll create a new package and call it entity like, the like it's saying here. And so I have that package and I'm going to see the user profile. So I can come to the application class here and find my user profile and see that what's missing is this public class. So I can use the IDE and you're in the driver's seat still. So I can use the IDE instead of copying and pasting from Codiumate and move that class. Now the thing is is that the IDE doesn't get it 100% right. So you're still driving and I'm going to refactor and move that into the entity package. So now that we have that, we're going to run our functional test. And we see we have complete green. We're good to go. So that's one down. So step one, we move the user profile. Now the next one is our profile repository. That's step two. So this one, I can look for and do this by creating a new package and I'll create repository and I will say I'm not going to type that so I will just copy the name say new class and paste that in and now you say well Dave that's a new class and that's an interface well that's the good thing about Java you can just call it an interface there and you're good to go so now if we ran this though we might have some conflicts because we didn't move it this time we went ahead and redid the interface, but we didn't remove it from the application class. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we have to go ahead and rearrange and do the imports. So I can import that package, rearrange the code, and now let's run our test. So we're all green. So we got two down. Now our third one. This is our big one, our profile controller. If we look at this and we look at our application class, we can see now that there's a get and a get there and a post. So we see how this wasn't even a class in itself. It was living inside the application. So it wasn't like a, uh, you know, you knew it right away that that should be in its own class. So our mate here helped us out and created this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a package called controller. And I'm going to copy this and it's called profile controller. So a little difference here is I'm going to go and do profile controller and your mileage varies. You do what you, what, how you like to do it in your keyboard shortcuts and there you go. So you'll see here though, we have profile service. So the refactoring service. So you're still in the driver's seat. You'll see that step three, we can't actually do yet because we need step four, the service. If we ran this right now, it would fail. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the service package. And I will create my profile service. Great. Now, paste all that in there. We have our profile service. We have our profile controller. Now that is not breaking. It's got a profile service coming in. Now we need to delete all of our post methods here. Now, I can do this one at a time, which I'll do, but you could have just gone and did all the classes 
did your config and then your application class and just overwritten everything. And this, I'm just trying to do the smallest amount of change incrementally first. So I can remove this profile there and we don't have a repository anymore. So we're good to go there. And now let's go ahead and run this. And we're all green. So we're incrementally changing and I can fix the imports here and run it again because we've changed code and we're going to incrementally change or incrementally test the functional code, which we're good. Now I have that down. I have the uh, profile service done. We have the controller done. And now we're going to go ahead and do this one config, which is the JDBC template. And since this is a small one, I'm going to do the config and then I'll do the actual application. So let me go ahead and create the package for config. And I will type out the name config just because it's not that long. And then I can just simply go like this, select everything and paste it. And I'll go to the application class. And for this one, this one's the nice one because I can just go here and everything now should be completed and we should be able to run our functional test and see we have gr all green. If I come down to the bottom and see what we did, well, did we do the user profile? Yep, profile repo, the profile controller, the service, and that service we had to bring, or the profile controller, we had to bring in the service too. So those two together, so it's like, uh, like again, Codiumate is your pair programmer. You're still in the driver's seat. You still need to use this as a tool, not just to do everything for you. Then you get your config and your application class. Now, the application event listener, maybe we want to extend this now and remove that and put it in its own config. Okay, so I want to break out this application listener. So we're going to incrementally keep on improving this code base. This is what refactoring is all about. I'm going to continue this chat and I'm going to just say this application listener, I copied that from the IDE. So it's got a little green there and that won't matter. And Codiumate doesn't care either. I'm just going to say break out this class. So what did it do? It went and created a listener package there, you can see, and it's got the profile insert listener. So let's go ahead and create that class in there. And you say, Dave, well, this is not really good practice probably too because you're inserting from there from this listener. Would you not use something like Flyway or something like that to start your user database seeding? Yeah, you can, but for this code base, we found this and we don't want to get as involved yet to put bring in Flyway. We also want to make sure that we're doing small incremental changes when we're doing our refactoring. Not only do we have our functional test, but always go with the smalls. So we're not going to bring in another framework or another piece of our in our code for refactoring. Um, I'm going to now paste in my new application and I'm going to run my functional test. Now we have green still, so we're good to go. Let's recap. We learned how to use AI to help us understand and get up to speed on our code base. Functional tests. Like Martin Fowler says, you need to have functional tests before you refactor your code. It's critical. Then we learned how to use our coding mate to refactor our code base to make it more modular. We also used our coding mate to prove that our code is more modular by creating unit tests. At the end, we highlighted how having both unit tests and functional tests are crucial and they allow you to confidently change your code and communicate that change. Happy coding with Codium Mate.